Welcome back 943 Earth Day just around the corner next Friday, April 22nd to be exact. It's a day where we celebrate our natural resources and think about ways we can conserve and maintain clean habits. And one of our most cherished natural resources is the Edwards Aquifer, the source of fresh water for millions around San Antonio and home to many at risk species. The Texas blind salamander is one of those creatures and meteorologist Sarah Spivey joins us now to chat about efforts to conserve their population. Hi there, Sarah. Hey guys, good morning. So when we think about the Edwards Aquifer, you know, we often think about our drinking water mm -hmm. and we're, like right now we're under stage two water restrictions. A lot of people think that those restrictions are in place uh, to keep uh, uh, us fed with water, right? <laughs> and enjoying a little bit of water. But in reality, those are in place to keep the springs of the aquifer clear, clean, and flowing because the aquifer is home to many of these at-risk species. And at the San Marcos Aquatic Resources Center, a backup population of the salamanders is kept alive and well just in case something happens to their population. And the idea here is that if something catastrophic were to happen to the aquifer itself or the rivers that are fed, like the San Marcos River, we would have a population on station. Here, they feed and breed the Texas blind salamanders to keep the population going. But what makes this strange looking salamander a perfect mascot for the Edwards aquifer? It's got these long gangly arms, it's got these really like fluffy gills, and it's completely white. And so it's kind of a very intriguing species. And I think people gravitate to its cuteness and its slightly creepiness, but it also its mystery. And researchers here are trying to solve the mystery of the Texas blind salamander, as details about the species population can be a bit fuzzy. We do some tagging where we, when we catch animals, uh, we'll release some that we catch and we'll tag them so that if we catch them again, we'll know it. And that can give us an idea of how many are down there. In reality, it's difficult to know just how large or small the Texas blind salamander population is, simply because the tiny creatures live deep underground and underwater in a vast pitch black aquifer which spans thousands of miles. But we do know that they're likely a top predator within the aquifer system, eating worms and small shrimp. Pretty much anything that swims in front of them, they'll probably try to eat it. Um, so not too discerning of an animal, but whenever there's not much down there, you have to take what you can get. Researchers have also determined that the salamanders can live for quite a long time because of their slow metabolism. We have some here that have lived about 10 to 15 years so far, but I wouldn't be surprised if they live 20 years or more. So if the Texas blind salamander lives for quite some time and their population is healthy, why do we need to regulate the water level and quality of the aquifer? They have very permeable skin, like if, if there's some contaminant in the water, it's going to permeate them too, right? Uh, unlike us who have like very tough skin, who are very resistant to environmental changes, they're super sensitive to environment, environmental changes. And in the end, the scientists here believe conservation efforts are not just about the species we protect. Through conservation, we're actually preserving these ecosystems and these, these river systems for our use too. And that's the thing, you know, even though they're monitoring the water quality and the water level for these salamanders and other at risk species, we benefit too. We get clean aquifer water and the aquifer is a great topic that meteorologist Justin Horn and I love to talk about. And so if you'd like to know more about those conservation efforts and even just how the Edwards aquifer works, we have a whole KSAT explains episode on the Edwards aquifer, which can be found on KSAT.com. So in your uh, animation there, in the middle of your story, it sounded like salamanders enjoy saltines. Is that, is that yeah. crunch, 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 crunch. I guess when you crunch an sh uh, aquifer shrimp, it makes that sound. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. So yeah, it's just fascinating. Not much is known about them, right. except that they are at risk because oh, yeah. of their permeable skin. And they really are so creepy and cute to hold. But that was interesting. I didn't know they were further up on the food chain. I just I didn't either. You know, so I little. thought that they were they right. were basically bait for something else. Right. I know they're the top predators. They're like the lions of the aquifer. The, the great white shark of some local creeks. Right, exactly. Okay. So uh -huh. yeah, again, that whole KSAT Explains episode is, is on a line right now on KSAT.com. Very cool. Thank you, Sarah, for Thank joining you, us Sarah. today. And happy Earth Day. Yeah, happy Thanks. Earth Day. All right, from